COVID-19 is a nasty old virus, but is it on a par with killer diseases from our past? Uh, is it the 21st century's version of the bubonic plague or Black Death, which killed up to one in three Europeans? Or is it, uh, as some have suggested, just an unprecedented and especially virulent form of the common cold? I don't want to downplay this, and I do appreciate there is a potential for a truly catastrophic wave of deaths to hit us, but the reaction of the media is as though the catastrophic wave is already upon us, when the reality of the situation is a small increase in the average number of deaths, which may sound large in daily death statistics, but um, is a statistical irrelevance in a nation of close to 70 million people. Before I get into this, let me also say I understand the position our government has been put into. The, uh, there were two scientific schools of thought presented to them, uh, one from scientists at Oxford University and one from scientists at Imperial College. Uh, Oxford suggested it was not going to turn into the Black Death. Imperial initially suggested that without a lockdown, COVID-19 might kill half a million of us. So this presented quite a dilemma for our careerist political leaders. If they followed the Oxford report, which would have meant no lockdown, but they got it wrong and many people died, uh, their careers finished. It's, uh, it's kaput all over. But if they followed the Imperial report, as indeed they have, but they got it wrong, their careers are not over. The economy might be shattered, the non-Covid death rates might have shot through the roof, bankruptcies and suicides might be through the roof, but the important issue, the really, really important issue, is that the politicians will retain their careers with their reputations intact. And just in case you're wondering why the politician's mantra is, we are following the science, the answer is that the scientists not the politicians, will be blamed should COVID-19 turn out to be a bit of a damp squib in terms of low overall death rates, but catastrophic economic damage. And I might also point out that when they say they're following the science, uh, even this is being economical with the truth. Uh, what they're doing in reality is following the opinion of some scientists uh, who have formed said opinion from a computer model and whose opinion is strongly disagreed with by any number of other scientists. Our politicians are following one particular opinion of one particular group of selected scientists, but they are most emphatically not following science. This has led uh, to unprecedented times for us, where once we used to isolate the infected, we now isolate the healthy. And where once we used to fight them on the beaches, uh, we now cower in our homes and inform the police if our neighbour takes his dog out more than once a day. A national madness appears to have taken over the country, driven by a hysterical media whose grasp of reality and morality comes a distant second place to shrieking COVID-19 horror porn headlines in the drive for increased sales. Uh, which in turn pressurises our cowardly politicians who fear for their careers far more than they fear for the good health of their citizens. There are many unknowns in all of this, but there are also some knowns. And this should lead our ragtag bunch of right-on teenage journalists to ask a number of questions. But I don't hear any important questions being asked at all. <clears throat> Excuse me. For example, how reliable are the people behind the Imperial report? Uh, have they been wrong in the past, and if so, to what extent? If they got it badly wrong and repeatedly wrong in the past, why should we believe them now? Are there any scientists in the Imperial team who might actually like a crashed economy uh, because the destruction of capitalism suits their hard left neo Marxist political? beliefs? If so, is Boris Johnson aware of this reality? And it is a reality, by the way. Uh, we're guided by the WHO advice, the World Health Organization advice, uh, to the point that YouTube will pull videos made by doctors 
who question said advice. But what is the WHO record to date? How good has their advice been? Is it not peculiar that for the first time in its history, the WHO is led by a man with zero medical experience? Is he personally unduly influenced by China? Are we even allowed to ask that rather pertinent question? Why are our airports allowing hundreds of thousands of people to enter Britain from countries with high infection rates? Does it seem logical or sensible to lock us all away whilst keeping the borders open? Over the Christmas period, 2,000 people a day were coming in from Wuhan. What happened to them all? Why are people flying into Heathrow today still not being tested upon arrival? Uh, why are they politely advised to self-isolate rather than being forced into quarantine? Is there a link between higher death rates in London and open airports? Uh, we were initially told the lockdown was to allow the NHS to gear up in order to cope, but we now hear of near-empty hospitals in rural areas, uh, unused Nightingale hospitals and city hospitals operating well within their capacity. So why are we still in lockdown? Why have the goalposts about ending lockdown been moved? Uh, we were told we must help save the NHS, but how will the NHS be funded in the future if the economy is crashed? Uh, fewer taxpayers will mean less money for the public sector. Have our brilliant politicians really thought this through? We're told a vaccine is a long way off and may never be found. The common cold, by the way, is a coronavirus and there's no vaccine for that despite decades of research. So without a vaccine, we need to use our own bodies to build a resistance to COVID-19. But how are we going to do that if we're not exposed to it? Uh, what will happen when we are finally exposed to it? Will we be locked down again? and again and again and will thwarting our ability uh, to develop herd immunity lead to more deaths in the longer term? Uh, we were told the lockdown was to help protect the vulnerable. So why was it considered a jolly good idea uh, to order hospitals to move elderly COVID-19 patients into residential care homes filled with the old and the ill. What on earth did the politicians and their so-called expert advisers expect to happen as a result? Are they really as stupid as they appear or did they deliberately set out to polish off the oldies? Uh, whichever reason it was, why should we now listen to a single word of advice they ever give us about anything? Anything at all. Uh, what's the overall death rate today? It's a very important question. How does it compare to the last five-year average? How does it compare to a bad year for flu? How does it compare to the Hong Kong flu pandemic in 1968? Uh, what are the death rates for the young? What are the death rates for the healthy elderly? Are the daily death rates even accurate or are they a multiple formed over days and even weeks and then disingenuously presented by the Daily Mail and the BBC as having occurred over the last 24 hours in order to appear more shocking? Why is the MSM engaging in propaganda and brainwashing over the whole COVID-19 issue? Have they been instructed to comply by the government or are they happy to do so regardless? And why would they be happy to do so? Is it because their own left-wing ideology and their distaste for free market economics uh, makes them happy. How do we know that the infection rate might? Uh, how do we know what the infection rate might be if we were not locked down? Do we have any conclusive answers as to the numbers already infected? Was COVID nineteen around for several weeks or even months before the lockdown? If it was, how many people carry the infection without even knowing it? You know, very few tests have been done, of course, but. Are the tests themselves reliable? Uh, what's the ratio of people dying from COVID-19 as opposed to those dying with COVID-19? Are doctors under pressure to list deaths as COVID-19 rather than death from influenza and pneumonia? If they are, why? Why are they doing that? And who told them to do that? How many deaths have there been this year 
from influenza and pneumonia. If the figure is higher than deaths from COVID-19, what is the explanation for the increase and why is there so little fuss about it? Uh, why hasn't a specific localised area with several thousand inhabitants all been tested for COVID-19 in order to give us a good idea uh, of the real scale of the infection? How many deaths will result from heart disease, kidney disease, strokes, cancer, etc. Uh, as a result of cancelled medical procedures combined with people who are now too frightened to go to hospital? How empty are our hospitals? Uh, what's happened to all the patients, including mental health patients, uh, amongst the 40,000 people cleared out in order to make way for the anticipated tsunami of COVID-19 patients? What's happened to all these people? Some, many, who knows, uh, will have died. How are their deaths being reported or have they just been forgotten about? Their lives and deaths rendered just collateral damage in the war against the coronavirus. Uh, how does rural infection compare to high density city infection? Is a lockdown for a city the wrong option for the countryside? Uh, what are the percentage chances of dying from COVID-19? If it's a tiny fraction of 1%, why are we destroying the economy and ruining the lives of the elderly who would rather spend the remaining time they have left seeing their grandchildren uh, being taken out to a pub for lunch? rather than locked in their care home rooms, alone and miserably unhappy. And despite being virtually immune to COVID-19, many teenagers are too frightened to leave their homes for exercise because they are being deliberately terrified by the incessant and mawkish fear-mongering from the obscene and hysterical mainstream media uh, personified by the ghastly Piers Morgan, who has excelled himself in driving a bullying hysteria to a level never seen before in Britain. And thank God Piers Morgan wasn't around in World War II uh, encouraging the troops and downplaying danger in his own inimitable manner. Now, there are many more questions, of course, and I will attempt to both ask them and answer them in a series of videos over uh, the next couple of weeks. You know, after all, there's... Um, there's bugger all else to do.